Hi there. This is part two of repairing this air compressor, paint sprayer, whatever you want to call it. This is kind of a prefix, uh, prequel to the start of part two actually, because I've just finished editing a bunch of part two and realized there are a few things I should explain. Um, number one, this is not a how-to. I never do how-tos. My degree is electrical engineering. It isn't maintenance or repair or machining um, or electrical or plumbing. I may have been doing tasks with tools like reamers all my life. Doesn't mean I've been doing them correctly. Uh, and in fact, you'll see that I mishandled this a couple of times. This is a reamer, hand reamer, and you'll see me use it. But what I did not explain is these are precision edges. And uh, yeah, it's okay if I set it down on a wooden bench here, but not hard. But you'll actually see me lay it down on a piece of one of my wrenches. Well, that's not good for the edges of, the, of these. So keep that in mind. I, I do certain things unprofessionally. Another, huh, another major faux pas, you might say, is when I was fitting this piece of cast. Now I believe this is what we used to call pot metal. I may be wrong. And I'm going to go get a magnet right now. And it's non-ferrous or non-magnetic, whatever you want to say, which makes it soft and not very strong. So beating it with a hammer is not a good idea. It could have fractured pretty easily. The other amateurish move was for me to beat this on. Granted, I used a brass hammer or a lead hammer, but you really don't do that to a shaft. Um, number one, I could have broken this piece of pot metal. Number two, more importantly, is in the back of this is a starting switch for single phase, and I could have cracked that material. And I may have. I haven't opened this up yet. What I did realize is that the shaft moved back. Well, when I had this apart, I should have checked for play back and forth and put shims in the back end. Another amateur move, never checked. So this shaft probably moved back an eighth of an inch or sixteenth of an inch. So I'm going to have to open this up and check that. But those are the things that really you don't want to repeat. You don't want to, you don't want to take your lesson from me on that. Um, I was taking a chance on it. I felt that I was within the limits of what this can stand. Uh, but it's still not the proper thing to do. Uh, as it is, uh, it, it looks good. Uh, you'll see partway through that I thought I had jammed the shaft up a little, but I think it was just that this shaft had gotten pushed back a little too far and just in working it, trying to get this on, it uh, freed up. But uh, you'll see this is quite an experience. Uh, when all is said and done, I believe I needed the reamer on this pot metal, I guess you'd say, because I pressed that um, ring, that sh sleeve that I made to take up the damage from going in the bearing. That was probably a little too much of an interference fit and probably um, probably collapsed the outside edge of this pot metal where it's very thin. And that was what was causing all my issues. So uh, take that for what it's worth. Uh, I hope you enjoy the second half. 
uh, you'll see that I had a struggle a little bit and I cut out quite a bit. Uh, the major portion of this where I was actually trying to fit this took me about 45 minutes uh, between speeding up sections cutting them out I've got it down to 10 or 15 minutes instead of 45 minutes um, and I I hope I left the parts in that make sense that have some dialogue that explain what I'm doing and uh, we'll go from there in a couple of minutes I'm going to uh, tape the final end of it which is to take this off check this play check to see if I haven't pushed that main bearing back too far put the fan on clean the filter um, but I'm getting ahead of myself I think so perhaps what I'm going to do is uh, oh and I apologize for having the camera in the wrong spot yet again uh, that's something I'm certainly an amateur at is making YouTube videos so uh, if you can stand it uh, Follow it through to the end and you'll see this guy work really well, I believe. So thank you. Uh, today's another day after screwing around with these bearings and trying to get them freed up and deciding if they were any good. I decided to just get rid of them. I'm in the, into it this far. So I had a new bearing in stock for this and the other one I have to wait till we get back from vacation but today I am going to assemble the motor part and see what the motor sounds like and perhaps I will work on this trying to get this to fit the inside of a bearing without being wobbly but that's that we'll see so uh, gonna set you up and maybe do it a little different and have the camera in front of me instead of looking over my shoulder all right so first I guess we're going to see if we can get this back into here we may have to do this slightly different Okay, that worked. Probably should have put the bearing in the casing race first and then driven this in. Used my press. Lots of things I probably should have done. But the bearing feels pretty good. So I'm going to live with it. Now mind you, this guy has been retired from main service for a while. He's used basically to blow up tires on the lawn equipment and the cars. So he doesn't get much use, which is a good retirement life for him. So 
The next thing is we will try to put the um, stator on. Make sure the bolts go in. Yep, they're fine. I didn't see any shims on the tail end. I guess I didn't look far enough. So I have some shims for the bottom end, the back end. Well, the mark, the mark in the center of this is the same size as that non-metallic bushing. So I'm thinking this metallic one goes on there. And then this one. Then this, and the problem I have is whether I'm going to be on or off. I don't know which way I've set it. I didn't think I switched it, but it doesn't seem right. Well, I guess I don't have to worry about it because it's only going to go on one way. It actually has a little tab by off that has to go on the little tab here. So that, that certainly makes it simpler. Now, now, be nice. Never had a reason to use these pliers before. Don't know where I got them. Kind of interesting. But by golly, it might be just what I need to get in here. Around the wires. And hold this guy in position. I tighten up the front. Ooh. Like so. Okay, now we'll add a little oil to this just in case. I already lubed up the felt that was in this back bushing. Alright. Now we have a nut driver for that side. I did not bring a nut driver for the nuts on the back. So let me go get...
Okay, that was that's good. Get two more on there. The uh, the bottom two nuts here are so close to the edge I can't get a nut driver in. But that's okay, they won't spin. Shaft still spins pretty good. Let's uh, put this carriage on. There's the motor part of it. Now I have to put the wires on here. Always need more tools. Alright, now to try to find a cord. Well, I can try those. I don't have any of the right angle ones. And those... Those might do it. And the last person that stripped this, which was probably me, they cut around it, but they didn't cut very carefully because the black wire, I can see copper in there, and the green one's not far behind. So we'll try that again being very careful. And I'll make uh, take advantage of those slices so that I can get my uh, wires in there like that now let's see if I actually have a tool that'll crimp that add some more tools to the pile So there's two crimps, one for the bare wire and one for the insulated part. I think those jaws are just a little too small. Now I have one of these tools upstairs. I was looking for another set of handles. And I believe that the draws I have here fit that, not one of these smaller ones. But we'll give it a shot. We'll see if they fit. And they do not fit. Well, they don't fit correctly. Let's put it that way.
expensive. Now well, that's a pretty good crimp. So I'm going to live with that. All right, now what to do with about, about the ground? Oh, that's going to break off, I think. Yep. All right, so I've got to find some different connectors. Okay, I cheated a little off camera. Um, those connectors just weren't going to work. And I had none of the others. So what I'm going to do is use these in here. But basically... Well, I really could use a smaller one than that. Okay, um, I am going to put a butt splice on that. And these are the wrong crimpers for that. But I don't care. For what I'm doing, this will be fine. Do the same to this one. This one is not insulated, so these are the right crimpers. <clears throat> like that. And I believe. believe we can get away with all this now. Well, we do that again. Only now it's going to be harder. I have less wire to deal with. So let's try the black one. Now I have to fix this one again, which will be more difficult. <sighs> okay, that worked correctly. Last crimp for ground. Need something to keep this from pulling out. I suppose I could have retrieve that copper ring Ooh. or that metal ring that was on the old wire but 
I don't think so. Now, I want this cover to fit flat. So, for my purposes, I'm going to put the ground on the outside. Um, not the ideal situation, I guess. But, I didn't really see any good place inside. And I suppose I, I could have made it longer and connected to something, but there's just nothing inside. So we are going to do our best to put this on like that. That should do it. Well, let's see if we have. And I got the switch upside down, but I can live with that. That seems pretty good. So now it's now it's on to the, the bearing and the piece that fits inside. All right, later. That was good certainly quieter without that compressor on it. All right, so you saw me put the motor together and how nice and smooth it ran. Now it's time to look at this piece and you can see that ring rim there and I filed some looks like it goes all the way around I'm I think I'm gonna take a chisel to that and see if I can split that off and make a new piece that goes on top uh, because it's supposed to go in there but it's it's pretty loose and I could put a shim in there and stuff, but you know, if, if that if this piece comes off, then I just make a new shoulder. So that's what we're gonna try. Here's where we're at. I tried to use a chisel on this to see if this was a collar of some sort. And once I went through a little bit of it. I think that was just a uh, casting mark and this is all one piece inside and out and it's pretty rough so what I'm going to do is I centered this as best as I can which of course puts this whole offset which is fine uh, for the compressor it doesn't matter too much but now that I've got it pretty well centered I'm going to clean this edge up pretty good so that I can actually make a collar to fit over this and go inside the, the bearing. And that collar is going to be a pretty tight fit on here. And probably made out of steel. And if I have to, I'll then glue it in. Well, I'll probably use Loctite bearing on this and on the bearing. So, if, so it shouldn't, shouldn't move. So I'm going to do that turning next. I've now reset my tool, my, my tip, my carbide, so that this has a flat and that has a flat so I can get a point into the corner in there. 
So we'll see how that cleans up. I'm going to put you on the stand and make a couple passes. Shouldn't need to take too much off. I have just a little bit more to take off there, so we'll take one more light pass. Yeah, that's good and clean. So now I'll just have to make a sleeve. All right, back on the bench. So here's our piece. And it is One inch, one hundred and eight thousandths. And this is one inch, one hundred and seventy thousandths. So I've got to make a sixty two thousandths sleeve divided by two is thirty thousandths. Okay, with the calipers quickly I had measured that to 1.17 something for the inside and in fact Looking at the SKF specs, it's 1.181. So what I will do is I'm going to turn this piece of pipe down to about 1.181 or 1.82. And if I need to, I'll trim a little more when I actually get the new bearing. And I'll turn that around and chuck that centered. I'll center that after I clean it up. And then I'll bore the inside. So that's what I'm up to next. I'm not going to set you up on the lathe. It's, people do lathe work much better than me. So you don't need to watch my fumbling around. But when I get done, I should be able to get this really close here. And, uh, and hopefully I'll run the boring bar inside and get that really close. I turn this outside with uh, with a standard tool which you had seen and I turn this also in case I had to cut it off and rechuck it and keep it concentric right so I as I I turn this and this size is about ten thousandths bigger than the specifications on the bearing that has to go on there but I am not going to turn this down until I actually get the bearing. I'm pretty sure that it's correct, but you know, why do that? So once I did all that, then I turned the inside with my boring bar. I had a little boring bar, didn't bother using carbide, um, and just turned it so that this piece will it's tight I can't push it in but I suspect that if I freeze this piece and or heat this piece this will slide right on then when they equalize it will be tight it's not going to go anywhere so that's what I'm uh, 
where I'm at and I'm not going to do any more until I get the bearing which will be after Christmas it'll be a couple weeks out because I don't have time to work on this now so I it's been a month or so since I've worked on this project so I don't know where I left off in the lathe but basically I had a piece of pipe and I turned the inside and outside diameters so that I could make this shim in here this little shim because this piece was so damaged that I turned that in the lathe as well and then made this collar for it so now it's on there nice and tight and uh, not going anywhere so now I'm going to try to put it on here. I'm going to set you up in the in the stand. It doesn't want to go on either way. Saw a bunch of rust in there. Huh, still won't go on. really don't want to drive it on and I keep, every time I do that I feel the bearings inside a little this was a brand new bearing FMD so I shouldn't be having this trouble I know I whacked the end of the shaft pretty hard so maybe it's off but it looks like it had a taper to it. Almost goes on backwards. Helps if I put the sandpaper in the right way.
is strange that it's not going in there. Pretty soft metal. I'm gonna see if I have a reamer for this. Well, I have what appears to be a reamer for that size. This is a, I guess you'd call it a tapered reamer. It's a little narrower on this end than this. So yeah, and it's got grooves underneath each one of these that are tapered. So when you move it towards one end, it gets smaller, and when you move it to the other end, it gets bigger. And it's not by much. So I'm going to move that way down, hopefully. I used a much larger size than this on the uh, pins for my, for my backhoe. That was an inch something. But yeah, you can see here the little slices. It's about right to call them stones, but they're not stones. They're uh, blades. Yeah, I'm going the wrong way. Ugh. Try to get these guys loose. Uh, let me go get some. I guess I'm three and one. Just to. So what happens is this this is tapered. I don't know if you can see that or not. Probably not if I don't put it down in the lens. And it slides in here. And if you see there's not much up here to slide into and yet and it's pretty deep down here. And then this barrel in the middle holds them perpendicular to the shaft. So I want to start small which means move them all down. We'll see what happens here. Yeah, see now that almost went all the way through. And it's just catching a little bit. So now I'll go get a wrench for that. So now I'll just Oops. Apparently there was a high spot at the end there. Because this went through pretty quick once I got past that. So we'll do that a little bit at a time until we can actually get this thing on. Ooh. What's that? Five eighths. Six ten. 
Oh, and this side 628. So let's let's move this up a little. Take off another couple of thousands. Apparently need a little more. Don't want to take too much off, so I'd rather work my way up just a little. Get rid of those chips. Chips all over the place. See, if you put it in the wrong way, it doesn't want to go in very far. Put it in because this also has a very slight taper to it so you and it would appear that i have oh, i'm taking some off this end and not much off of that end Maybe this one got compressed a little when I squeezed that ring onto it, which could very well be, which is a shame. But even the other end doesn't go on very well. So we'll just keep going. I don't understand. Would have thought by now it would go on. Huh. Well, you can't see it, I don't think, on the camera, but the shiny stuff is getting further and further in. So I'm making progress, but I, I'm not, I haven't cut anything off this end yet. Well, I think it's now, I probably slammed that on too hard. Oh. 
All right, it's getting there. Um, at least the shaft is all the way through now. I'm going to uh, get a socket and a hammer. All right, well, at the risk of damaging the motor, I'm going to whack it some more. I think I'm going to end up taking the back off and see if I drove the shaft out any. Well, that has to go back a little further. Good. Now I have to do is I think it was this nut and bolt that were in here. Well, let's see. Maybe I'll call well enough. <laughs> Gotta wait for the air to bleed down. Won't start with pressure on it. All right. Boy, that's a whole lot quieter than it was. Uh, All right, I'm not going to subject you to it. I'm going to pull the back off and double check that I didn't drive this in too far. I probably did. Um, I mean, it runs good, but... If I drove it too far back, I might have screwed up the starting switch. So I want to make sure that this is as far forward as it should be. Um, then we'll go from there. I probably should have taken the back off and rested the end of the shaft on the table anyway. But, uh, uh that'll be a little later. I'm going to call it quits here. This was good. I think all i got to do is put the fan on. Well, i got to tighten up this set screw, put the fan on, well, which looks like it needs to... Well, it wasn't all the way through. There's rust on the end. But it's probably a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch too far in. So, I'll work on that. And then put this on, put the, sh uh, put the filter back on. Which I saw here someplace. I still haven't figured out how to clean it. And it really does need replacing or cleaning. Maybe I'll just try water and see what dissolves. 
So we're getting there. We're a little closer to having this functional again. Little compressor that I use for blowing up tires now. I left off putting the piece on the front. But now I'm curious about if I push this shaft back. And if I did, how? Because there should have been some spacers on the back to prevent the shaft from going back and forth. So I'm going to However, my nice new wire is right in the way, so I will have to undo the cover just so I can get to the bolt. However, <clears throat> I have to take this switch off again, which is okay because it's upside down. Well, I guess this will give me a chance to fix that too. Guess I have to go the other way. Uh, there's a bearing in here. I thought I had knocked that out. Apparently, it didn't go back very far. Here's another example of it. How I do it and not how you probably should do it instead of beating on this with a hammer even though it's a lead hammer I probably should put it in my press and gently press it but uh, I found out what I wanted to find out which is it's not moving which means I didn't push it back So now the question becomes, do I think I have enough on here? Well, if I didn't push it back with all the hammering I did to get the eccentric on, I think it's okay. So I'm going to put this all back together. Oh, and there's my fourth nut. When I put this together the first time, I was wondering why this wire was a little short and I had to play with it to get it in here. And it's because the switch was upside down. So now I can put this back on the way it was. Like so. Yep, make sure I'm not pinching any wires. That looks good. Probably don't want to push that on too far before I make sure the bolts go through.
Okay. I must be blind. Oh, you idiot. Did you leave it in here? You did leave it in there. I couldn't figure out why I couldn't see through the hole. And it's because I left the long stud in there. Fingers aren't as nimble as they used to be. Well, there's a space there, but I guess that's okay. It's not going on any further. this back on and uh, now that we pulled it apart we should test it again before I go further So I believe I have a few things to do. I have to put the set screw in that. One of the reasons I did not want to ream this pot metal out too much is because it is pot metal. And I was afraid if I got it too loose it would end up destroying itself on the shaft by vibrating loose. Um, and I can tell you right now that I have to turn it a little. Although not much. Huh. Never use pliers on the end of a shaft. You'll burr it up a little. Whoa, okay. Well, I think it's safe to say it's not moving. Trying to hold the flat on the shaft vertical. Alright, we'll leave that. It's not going to be used commercially or professionally. It's intermittent use. That's probably adequate. Yeah, it seems pretty good. So now, I guess I'm going to try to wash this. We'll see. Well, uh, I clean this with my Vandal Mark remover, washed it out thoroughly, then took it to the big air compressor, sprayed it out. And while I was out there, I noticed there's this huge whole house air filter waiting to be thrown away. And that made me realize that I have some other filters that don't fit anything anymore and I probably could have easily cut a piece of that out and stuck it in here. So, say la vie. Now this guy goes 
in. Whoa. So he goes in here. There's a little plate that it rests up against on the bottom that is on this piston and leans against two sidebars and then this holds it in. And I believe this has got a little tab on it. I believe that goes in the top and these spring in there like that. All right. Oh. And it shifted to the left, so I gotta take it out again. It's missing, it's gonna suck air on the right hand side. That's more like it. Of course, after 60 years, I don't think sucking a little air through that would have hurt it any. It's probably seen more than its share. There, that's that. Last up. Huh. Another one that doesn't want to fit. Have to back the set screw out just to hear more. with a smaller Allen wrench. <laughs> Needed to be tweaked just a little. like that. <clears throat> now we have the cover. And two screws. That are not the same. So apparently someone lost a screw before. And uh, replaced it, which is okay. I think the original was like this one. This looks like a pan head. Oh, and I might go look for another pan head. Why not? Something that another pan head, shorter, more more closely resembles what's on the other side. As long as I can get it started without cross threading it. There we go. Here's the compressor re not rebuilt repaired took this big heavy chunk of metal off the bottom uh, what I will end up doing this sits on the shelf in my shed and it tries to walk its way out I'll just build a small wooden box for it to hold it in we'll see if we get the walking action here That's the uh, overpressurization. That's the relief valve. So, but I also hear a. Oh, okay. 
my uh, quick connect leaks a little. I thought maybe I had a head gasket that was bad. So there you have it. Boy, I hope the camera didn't move. Oh boy, I bet it did. I bet it did. It was back too far. I had it back here. Well, maybe you saw everything. So, my compressor is rebuilt. Has two new bearings in it. Has a sleeve to take up the space where the pot metal got destroyed. Has a new cord on it. I greased the back bushing or oiled it. Cleaned it up just a little. Don't want to make it look too good. And that's it. So, thanks for watching. If you liked it, press like. If you didn't like it, let me know why in the comments. Uh, if you want to subscribe, that's fine. Eventually, with another 9,994 people, I might hit 10,000. <laughs> I don't know what the what what YouTube considers a real real channel is. Is it a thousand or ten thousand? Doesn't matter. That's secondary to me. It would be fun to see that, but um, unlike some people, I'm not trying to just create content for the purpose of making money. I'm I'm going to show you how I fix some of my stuff. And I think that's what this is going to end up being mostly is a fix it. Um, I actually have a really small project. Oh, I thought this was small. I have a really small project um, in the electronics workbench next for one of my customers. Uh, they have a VFD, which is a speed controller in layman's terms, for a motor. And to monitor the output, they need what's called current loop, 4 to 20 milliamps. And the VFD is 0 to 10 volts. So I bought a little converter. Now I have to uh, set it for the minimum and maximum, put it in a box, find a power supply. And I think that's going to be the next uh, project because I've got to install that in a few days. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Happy New Year. It's the first, this is the first, uh, first second half of the video for the new year.